The next digital asset that I'll create is a texture mask digital asset. This is a node that will combine together different masks, a curvature slope noise mask that will be used to create additional detail on the color map. And this is inspired by a node in the landscape software Gaia. In it, it has a texture node which can create this really nice noisy mask which is influenced by different features of the landscape such as a slope or curvature and then that's combined with a noise to create this really nice flexible mask and that's what i want to try and recreate here so let's start by from our previous height field color adjust i'm going to drag off again add a height field visualize and use this to again reset the tinting to default and remove the material so now i want to first of all add a high field mask by feature and i want to uncheck mask by slope and check mask by curvature and let's actually name this mask curvature so we know precisely what it's doing and I'm hit compute range and come to the curvature ramp and I'm going to come to the cog and set this to linear and then just adjust these ramps and what I want to do is mask just the cavities so the cavities rather than the peaks so let's invert this mask and just adjust this slightly. So I think something like that will do. Let's actually bring up this mass curvature set it to one. There we go, something like that. So let's set the first position to 0 0.4 and the second one to 0 0.5. Let's try 0 0.6. Leave it at 0.55. So you want something that's a little bit sharp, clear and kind of really clearly visible. And from this high field mask by feature, I'm going to add a high field copy layer. And again, I'm going to use this expression dollar OS and Let's rename this high field copy layer to curvature. So next we're going to create the slope mask. So I'm going to select both of these nodes, hold alt, left click and drag to duplicate them. Let's name this mask by feature mask slope and rename the high field copy layer to slope. And I want to adjust this high field mask by feature. So I'm going to uncheck mask by curvature and check mask by slope. And I'm going to come to the cog and switch this to linear. And then adjust this min and max slope. So let's set max to 40 and min to 30. And what I actually want is I always want this to be quite a sharp mask. I don't want there to be much gradation. So all I want to do is link these two together so that there's always only a difference of 10 between these two values. So what I'm going to do is just highlight 30 in the min slope angle, left click and drag this and drop it into the max slope angle, and then select relative channel reference. So now these two are linked together, so they're always going to be the same value. So what I'm going to do, if I left click on the max slope angle, I'll now see that reference. And I'm just going to type in here, plus 10. And if I left click, we'll now see there's always going to be a 10 value difference between these two parameters. So I'm going to leave that at 30.
And the next mask I want to create is the noise mask. And from the height for the visualize, I'm going to drag off and add a high field mask noise. I'm going to want to bring this element size down to 100. So I want this to be a fairly dense noise. So this is going to want to add this kind of soily texture to the landscape. I'm then going to come down to post processing and set the gain to 0 0.5. Let's add after this another high field mask noise. And for this one, I always want the element size to be 10% smaller than the uh, large element size. So I'm going to select the first high field noise, right click on element size and click copy parameter. Then come to my second and in element size, right click, paste relative reference. Now again, these are linked together, so they're the same size. But if I left click on the element size label, and in here, I'm going to add uh, divide by 10. So now this will be at a value of 10. And if I increase this element size, this will always be 10% uh, of our larger element size. Because I want to use this element size to be at a smaller scale that it breaks up this larger noise. So to do this breakup, what I'm going to do is check sensor noise. And I'm also going to increase the roughness under the noise settings to something like 0 0.9. And now what is happening is um, by clicking center noise, the noise of the second height field will be um, between a value of minus one and one. With this unchecked, it's between zero and one. Checking center noise centers it between minus one and one. So we're having negative values on the second height field noise. And when this is combined with our first height field mask, with the combination set to add, what it's doing is where we have positive values, we are adding to the mask. And where we have negative values, we're actually subtracting. So that has this really nice breakup. So let's add another high field copy layer. Again, I'm going to add dollar OS. And I'm going to rename this high field copy layer to soil because that's what I want this noisy mask to feel like. So next, I want to combine these three different masks together. So from the curvature, I'm going to add a high field layer. And let's add in the slope input. Then duplicate this height field layer. I'm going to wire in the first height field layer to the first input and then the soil to the second input. And now let's combine these together. So first of all, I'm going to add a high field clear mask. Just to clear away that existing mask and now add a high field combine layers. So on the destination to be mask. And for the first operation, we're going to set it to copy. And then add in the slope mask. Okay, now let's add the second layer, set this to copy. And this one, I want to be the curvature. And I'm going to leave these as copy because I just want to be able to fade between these two layers. So we can kind of combine these. If I set these to both to 0 0.5, we'll just see a bit of each kind of fading through one another. And if I increase the blend of the curvature, we get more of that and less of the slope. And then for the third layer, let's add in the soil. And for this one, I'm going to leave the operation to add. And I'm going to select soil. So this is adding to the landscape. And what I'm going to do is if I come back to 
In fact, what I'll do is I shall do it here. By between the mask clear and the combined layers, I'm going to add a height field remap. And I'm going to set the layer to remap to be soil. And I'm going to set the output min to be minus one. So now the values of the soil mask are being wrapped to be from a value of zero to one to values from minus one to one. And where we have the minus one values, those areas will actually be subtracting from our slope and curvature mask. So if I set this to 0 0.5, we have this noisy breakup where we're adding some noise in some areas while subtracting it from others. And I think this really kind of creates a quite interesting mask, which has some features driven by the landscape, such as the curvature and the slope. But then we also have this random noise texture, which will adds a really nice kind of natural breakup. And we can adjust these different masks to create different looks. So I'm going to reset these to 0 0.5 for each, have those as our default values. And just as before, we also have this overall scale, which we can increase to kind of increase the strength of the mask. I'm also going to check clamp minimum and clamp maximum. Let's add a few more features to this mask. I'm going to add a high field distort by noise. And I want to set the distort layers to mask because I want to distort the mask layer and I'm going to bring the element size right down to one and as I increase this amplitude it displaces the mask and if I reduce it right down by middle mask click on the uh, parameter I can come down to maybe 0.01 or maybe 0 .1, or 0 0.1. There we go. So we can just add a subtle extra noise to the high field mask just to add some additional breakup. I'm going to set the ampl default amplitude to 1. Second of all, I'm going to add a high field distort by layer. And the layer that I want to displace is the mask layer. And I'm going to distort the mask by this height layer. And I'm just going to decrease the sub steps to two. And this should hopefully speed up this displacement. So as I increase the values, you can see the mask kind of sliding up the landscape. And if I decrease the values and go into the minus values, it begins to slide down the landscape. And this just creates some interesting effects, just helps feel like the uh, noise is following the contours of the landscape a bit more. Let's set the display scale back to one. And what I want to do is have these two distortions to be optional. So I'm going to add in a switch. It's going to be called switch distort by noise and let's add that into that switch and then let's duplicate this switch again we want the first input on the switch to be the first switch and then the second input to be the high field distort by layer and let's call this to switch distort by layer And I also want this first switch to be the first input of the high field distort by layer. So now I can choose whether or not I want these distort layers to be active. So now we have our mask created. I want to take this and turn it into a digital asset. 